everybody. Thank you for watching probably the fanciest version of Two Minute Talks, which is probably going to be more <laughs> than two minutes. I am honored to be joined by Ray Seahorn. You know her from way too many things. Thank you so much, Ray. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that I'm on the fancy one. Wow. Well, I mean, there's, a, there's only been four. <laughs> what, was everyone just wearing sweatpants in the other ones and in the basement? Like, how, what, what's fancy about ours? Who's to say I'm not wearing sweatpants right now? That's true. <laughs> so um, I'm actually going to start off on kind of a bummer. Uh, was there ever a time in your career that you felt like giving up and wanted to, to quit and move on? No, I had some lean years where it was very, very exhausting. I've been doing this about 25 years now, if I include my theater career. And um, there were some very lean years where I had to take multiple day jobs in, or use all of my savings, deplete it, and then start over again if I had savings that uh, I was worried about how I was going to make a living at this and not drop dead from exhaustion. But um, for whatever reason, no. And I didn't, I even, I had some wonderful encouragement in the beginning, but I also had some people uh, really not think that I could make a career out of this. Um, and all that did was fuel me to keep going. <laughs> uh, the very first time I met you, I mentioned to you how much I loved Franklin and Bash and how still to this day, I'm disappointed the way it went off the air with that cliffhanger and everything. How much yeah. fun was Franklin and Bash? And do you have any moments of TV shows or movies or whatever where a franchise came to an end and you were like, oh man. Oh, we, every time I love a show, it's, I, you know, there's that push pull, whether it's, whether it's Breaking Bad that I think had one of the best finales ever on um, The Sopranos. I actually did like their finale, Six Feet Under, I thought was a fantastic finale. For me, it's a bit of a push pull. If you, if you pull off a finale, I still miss hanging out with those characters. I definitely think it's worse if there's something that seemingly goes off the air without any kind of um, uh, ramp so that they can write a great <laughs> finale. Uh, we don't always know the behind the scenes stuff of why something goes off the air that way. Um, and in answer to your other question, I love Franklin and Bash. I had such, such a great time. Um, Mark Paul Gosler is wonderful. Obviously I spent a lot of time with um, Breck and Meyer as, our, as my, my love hate. <laughs> Pal on that um, and he has impeccable timing and we had such a good time and Bill Chase and Kevin Falls the creators I have worked with them uh, on multiple projects before and um, they're two of the best people to show up to work to on anything yeah you could tell you guys just had a great environment it, th I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why I liked it so much uh, yeah it was fun you really Lots of fun. Um, obviously uh, you play another attorney uh, moving on to a Better Call Saul in Kim Wexler. And first question I have about Kim is she's, she's got a lot of Kansas City Royal stuff. I know it's part of a character in the show, but does that have anything back to, to fall back on you? That did not come from me personally. That was another uh, jigsaw puzzle piece that right. I put into um, – my own character bio and backstory stuff that I that I try to work on and and add to all the time and I and I know that yeah fans fans do definitely comment on it and uh, ask questions and yeah I have my own thoughts as I've strung together things here and there and her talking about um um it's kind of like that picture of Charlie Day with all the strings coming up and from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, and her talking about being from the Kansas-Nebraska border and um, uh, not wanting to end up at a hinky dinky for a lifelong career and stuff. So I, I try to put all these things together, but I, I, I don't have concrete answers and it didn't come from me personally. Gotcha. So Kim Wexler is a Royals fan. Is Ray Seahorn a big sports fan of any specific team or sports in general or just kind of... Not your... I knew nothing about sports <laughs> before getting together with my fiance and um, my two boys, uh, technically my stepsons that I call my boys, but um, they're, all three of them are into every single sport there is. And when there isn't a sport that is having a season or I don't even know how the seasons go, if, if there's not prominent sports, they will find a new sport. They yeah. will find anything they can to watch as a sport. They're suffering greatly right now <laughs> from not being able to watch that stuff. But um, I do like 
uh, baseball and I love watching basketball. Yeah, I definitely know the boys are uh, fans of baseball. Uh, from they from do love experience. baseball, and you guys were so great to them, and they still have the broken bat. You allowed them to have a home run broken bat yeah. that came from there. Yeah, awesome. they love it. Um, so now that uh, Better Call Saul has caught up to the timeline, the isotope started in 2003. Albuquerque isotopes? All this stuff. Don't you think somebody like Jimmy or, or Howard would have a suite at Isotopes Park? When if they did, they would like try and one-up each other with what was inside of it? Definitely Howard, as long as his entire career is not brought to a screeching halt after our lovely finale of <laughs> the season of Very Saul. True. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if he, still, <laughs> if he still has a career in any money, I would think he would have, I would think he would have like, pre pre-purchased one like on spec yeah. just thinking there might be a skybox it seems day. like a very howard thing to do right yeah <laughs> or honestly just the parking lot at night seems like a great meetup spot you know it's just a establishing sure. background shot or whatever um exactly so a totally hypothetical question because this is not things that really happen if you and your um co-workers on better call saw got stuck on a desert island and you could pick one of them to survive with, who would it be? And I'm not talking act. I'm not talking characters. I'm talking actors. So Mike Ehrman Trout does not count, but all of those Jonathan yeah. Banks might. Wait, am I am I honestly picking the person that I think has the best survival skills? Whoever, who who you would just want to be stuck with, either in terms of entertainment, survival, or you know you can just outlast them. Oh, that's too hard. I want. Th that's way too hard. I there's there's nothing better than hanging out in any room with every single one of those people. Um, my, with the exception of my loved ones, I don't. But but there, I I couldn't pick among them as far as entertainment or fun. They're all different, interesting, witty uh, people, and 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 so much fun and so smart. They're not. Um, just goofballs they're incredibly intelligent survival skills i gotta say uh that might be a toss-up between bob and patrick just because bob did this incredible action movie and like went at it just watching him train for that and figure out and setting his mind to something just like he set his mind to um the tremendous workload and passion he put into better call saul was definitely impressive and then there's Patrick Fabian because Patrick Bob and I live in this one house when we are filming so I see these guys all the time and Patrick Fabian does more before six o'clock in the morning <laughs> than I do in like an entire week it's in he's always returning from uh, like on a bike and he did some children's charity and a marathon and bought everyone coffee and then he's starting the day and I'm just getting up I'm still surprised the there's a six o'clock in the morning. All right, a, a similar question, again, with the, with the actors and the cast. Who would be the first person to die in a horror movie to set up the plot? Because in my group of friends and in my life, it's always me. I never get to see what the actual movie's about. I'm the one in the first 10 minutes that sets up the plot of a horror movie. Yeah, who comes across as like an expendable funny character? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say expendable. Well, uh, well if we're going like, if I'm we're going the, I'm the kind of person horror movies, over. it would be me, right? It's, uh, it would be the chick. Although you might save her, you might keep her around to make sure she's braless and Or it ends up later. you're the killer. Um, that's also true, which tend to be the parts I'm offered more. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, oh, I know who. The guy, I wish I knew his name because I think the actor killed it. The, the guy, the young um, man who has to keep scrubbing uh, Gus Fring's fryer over and yes. over. Thank you, Lyle. You can go home. Um, but is it... You think it's okay? It's clean? It is acceptable. He would definitely be killed. You just keep popping up in shows I love. You are so great in Veep. And oh, thanks! Veep in, was so much fun. In, I don't know what you're talking about, because oh, really? I am the senator's chief of staff. Yeah, 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 for now. It's such a, uh, a, a show where every character is just despicable. And uh, d don't make any jokes, okay, Dan? Because with your face, when you attempt to be charming, it really does come off as... As evil. 
Yeah. Are you a fan of the show before? And just, just a little bit about your, your experience on Veep coming in seven seasons in with a cast that was already so established and, and so likable, yet so evil at the same time. Oh, yeah. Massive fan. Massive <laughs> fan. To go from, from I had completed a, a season, I guess season four, was it? Of, um, of Better Call Saul, which, you know, I have to say, I think is the best drama on TV because I love it. But, um, and then you're like, oh, hey, do you want to, uh, you know, talking to David Mandel, he was like, I'm not sure what your character was doing. We haven't fleshed out the, her storyline or whatever. Um, and I was like, I don't care. I'll just stand around the background. That's like the greatest comedy. Uh, are you kidding me? And then I got to watch um, these geniuses at work. It was, uh, it was amazing. I kept thinking it was very hard to not feel like you won the lottery or, some sort of very different form of a make a wish dying wish foundation thing for me or something because it it was very out of body experience these people were all doing like series wraps you know on each other yeah. with this legacy they'd made and um <laughs> i was just like hey guys well, congrats <laughs> well i think you killed it i mean oh thanks it was it was awesome um it was amazing it was an amazing experience all right, kind of circling back to that first question I asked, this one is a much more happy one. Um, what is the best piece of advice, either personally or professionally or both, that you've ever received to kind of help people through, you know, a tough time right now? Oh, one of them for me applies to what we're going through right now, as, uh, as well as prior to this career and um, overall well-being. And that is you need, to be com you need to be comfortable with your own company. You really need to be able to sit with your own thoughts. Um, and for all the hours you see any successful actor on the screen or on the stage, it triple those hours they were alone studying. And you need to be in love with the work as much as you are with the exposure or any kind of fame or however you're quantifying your success. Um, and and given the time we're in right now, it's certainly, uh, it's hard. It's hard to not have a balance to those hours alone to, um, you know, getting to see your friends and your loved ones more and be, be more social. But um, I think it definitely benefits. It has benefited me in my career and, and it, has, it has enabled me to feel just as passionate staying home, going over lines and trying to figure out 85 different ways you could turn a phrase is as exciting to me as um as then volleying them off bob and seeing what bob brought to the table so uh it's it's good to uh yeah it's good to be able to sit with your own thoughts that's a great way of looking at it i love that be comfortable with your company i think that's fantastic <laughs> all right well ray thank you so much for uh spending some time with me i very much appreciate it and yes. um yeah good luck with everything else not that you need it you too. <laughs> you too. It's good to see you again. Yeah.